You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to another very thought provoking show of Ask Drone You. My name is Pablo. And my name is Roberto. Muy bien. This is episode number 661. Thank you guys, as always, for taking a couple minutes out of your day to spend it with us. Definitely, guys. Thank you very much. And today we've got a very important show discussing the difference between airspace waivers and authorizations. But before we go into that, just a quick special thank you from our sponsors like Videoblocks.com. If you're like me and you have been inhibited by a crazy wild client who didn't give you the environment you needed to shoot and you really needed to get those sunset shots, don't worry. Don't let your production value slip. Go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone and become a member of Videoblocks. It's only 149 bucks so that you can get copyright free music and you can get copyright free audio for that price. It's really awesome. There's millions of clips. And again, it's a, it's a real opportunity to increase your production value. If you've ever had a problem happen when you have been developing a story and putting together that story, check them out. Videobox.com forward slash drone. And a message to a few of the people I met at Inner Drone. I met a lot of people, a lot of members, and I actually met a lot of non-members. And a lot of people have said, that they have attended other in-person trainings, but they have learned more from this podcast than those other in-person trainings, hmm. which I find hmm. I, I, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, very, no, very happy. Grateful that you listen. Very grateful that you listen. And if you want to support the show, you want to get more engaged with the people behind the scenes of the show. You want to learn even more because the information does go a whole lot deeper. I invite you to get exclusive access into the Drone U community. Just go to thedroneu.com and become a member. I think that you're going to find that if you like the information here, what you'll get out of that is just so much better. So much more in depth and you're going to have a lot of resources Resources and access to documents you wouldn't have by just listening to this over iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud or wherever you download shows. So make sure to check it out. But Rob, why don't you go ahead and play that question for us? Hey guys, Todd here in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a Part 107 a license holder. A uh, quick question in regards to authorization versus waiver. Uh, I wanted you to weigh in. I, I called my local FISDO office. They say uh, if you know you're going to be needing to fly in a certain area, a lot, like say downtown Cleveland, which is where I'm at, which is class D airspace. He said, so go and submit a request for authorization first. You can request those up to like six weeks. And then once you have the authorization, then go back and then request the waiver. You can request a waiver for up to like four years. Um, he said the waiver is a little harder to obtain. They dig into your business. You'll have to lay out risk mitigation, all that kind of stuff. I've been getting a lot of requests for real estate. Uh, within that class D airspace, um, do I need to go in and submit an authorization for each location? Um, this is one thing that it's, I haven't really gotten a clear answer on. So if you guys could just lay it all out there, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Hmm, you bet. Thank you for the question. And guys, if you have a question, go to astronew.com. Paul, waivers, authorizations, paperwork. Well, I just want to say you guys should check out our lengthy video on how to fill out airspace authorizations and waivers. Um, it is on YouTube. It is already up and available, has a few thousand hits on it. Um, and it was updated when they changed the system. There were a lot of other videos out there, but they're not updated. So make sure you check out our updated video. I think I said updated a few times. Um, anyway, it's there is a significant difference. It's not a six-week difference, Rob. You can actually apply for airspace authorization in an entire airspace for up to six months. And in all honesty, all of my airspace authorizations are actually for a year period. So even though the website says six months, I've actually been getting a year period. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a reason for that. 
Was that I'm, you didn't request it for a year? They just gave it to you I for a year? I did request it for a year. You did? Okay. Yes. Um, and the thing is, is that I'm expecting for the FAA to come out with a new system to essentially allocate uh, their resources in a much better and more efficient way and not inhibit the business of operators who want to do things the right way because we're really sick of that. Um, and, and what I'm expecting is that by June of next year, and we now have multiple pieces of evidence for this, by June of next year, we're expecting an application that you're going to be able to get instantaneous airspace authorizations and approvals, which would really be nice. And I wish that I wish that was now. But I think if you apply for an airspace authorization within a year period, that's not asking too much. When you apply for a waiver, there are a lot more details and a lot more information that you do have to provide. And... With the wait period that's currently going on, I do not think it's even viable to apply for airspace waiver. But if you want more details on the differences between those two, please, please, please check out our video. You'll find the link uh, in the information in the show notes below. But also just go to our YouTube page and search DroneU Airspace Authorization. I think that's that's really important. Which Yeah, there's a lot of phenomenal information in the video that Vic and you put together. It's... Um it's helped a lot of people get through that process. But just the basic difference for those that don't know, an authorization refers specifically to an airspace um, allowance, essentially, right? Versus a waiver, which is to have things like daylight operations taken care of. Meaning yeah, a so waiver that you can fly means at that night. you're waiving, essentially, the law. Correct. And an authorization is saying that you're authorized to fly in controlled airspace. Correct. Essentially, it is really the main difference. And for a while, they didn't even allow you to fly in that manner whatsoever. So um, I find it, I find it really interesting. Uh, I find it really interesting. This has really become insane. I don't think they actually realized how many people were going to be ap- applying for airspace authorizations. Mm-hmm. So some people are seeing uh, Stephen Miller is one, one particular character. He applied for an airspace authorization in Phoenix. I think it was back in February, and he still doesn't have it. Is that right? Wow. I mean, you're stuck if you're following the law. There's just not much you can do. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in all honesty, Rob, I, I really am excited for this this system that they say is supposedly coming out uh, where you are able to see the UASFM or the UAS facility maps of that area. And those maps really showcase what they're going to allow for safe operations in that area. So if you are applying for an airspace authorization, I highly recommend that you just apply for everything under 200 feet because normally most of the airspace allowances in the UAS FM are going to allow you to fly in anywhere from about three nautical miles out from an airport in class D that'll probably be anywhere from three to 400 feet. But Hmm. Which again, you generally don't need to even go that high. No. I mean, that's pretty unusual that you would need to go that high. And yes. And again, if any airplane is that low, that far out in the airspace, they have much bigger problems than your drone. (laughs) This is true. Nonetheless, get the heck out of the way if you are flying. Which that's that's what is really fascinating to me because the FAA says that you're always supposed to yield to manned aircraft. So why can't we fly in some of these controlled airspaces as long as we're yielding to manned aircraft? And there are cases of manned pilots being aggressive and nefarious. The Newport Beach police pilot is the that story we told a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, his uh, his seniors have reached out to me and apologized. So hmm. that was nice. Um, but you know, as long as everyone is acting in the best interest of safety, I think that. Uh, I think that, you know, we can all get along. I mean, I just, I think that you have a lot of people who are manned aviation guys and, you know, it's not everyone, but I think you see some kind of protectionist guys that see their jobs going away um, and they see opportunities being taken away from them essentially because of drones. But then, you know, then I think of instances like there have been three helicopter crashes in the last week and they have affected at least 10 lives, one of which was very, very close to us. And it just makes me think, why are why are we still using helicopters for video? Why are we still using planes for video? And we have a phenomenal solution that is much safer 
than putting someone up in the air. And I think it's just because people yeah. have that emotional connection with flying. And I totally understand it. I 100% understand it. But at some point, we have got to be rational about this issue. Yeah. And, and changing paradigms, Paul, is just difficult. We all know that um, sort of human nature dislikes change as a whole, and particularly when they feel threatened by that change. But I don't know, I'm kind of excited by the amount of manned aircraft pilots, be it fixed wing or helicopter that are that are getting into the drone industry and that we're seeing in our community. I agree. And I don't want to make them feel ousted whatsoever because it's those people that are open to change and lifelong learning and, you know, wanting to understand. You know, I think of Brett, too, uh, who's a helicopter pilot. And he he's, you know, very pro drone, but he also has a strong bias towards manned operations, and I understand that. But a lot of it is coming from safety. He's worried about safety for being in the cockpit mm -hmm. while he's flying, and I understand that. I, I don't want anyone to risk my life because of their ignorance. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so you're right, 100%, that there are a lot of guys that are not like that, that are willing to change, and that I think, um, that I think are, you know, really want to promote safety in the drone industry, like and how safety is promoted in the helicopter and manned aviation industry. Absolutely, and with the right attitude, which is the type of attitude that a lot of these folks that we're referring to have, guys that are coming into the drone community and have... A long history. I mean, we're getting people that have been flying manned aircraft for 30 years and they're getting into the drone world. They are in a unique position to be very helpful with safety and understanding airspace and and being an advocate for the drone industry from a really fantastic perspective. I mean, that, that whole experience factor of manned aircraft folks that they can bring into the drone world is really beneficial. I agree. And I would like to see more structure in the drone world. But I think a lot of the drone world wants to see more structure in the FAA. So, uh, you know, some people are like, well, I would be interested in that if we got support from the FAA. And that's the thing is that there are a lot of lower level guys uh, that are really willing to help you out. Uh, you know, you can get airspace clearance from FISDO. Like mm -hmm. if, you, if you've got an airspace authorization in, many times I have needed to fly somewhere and I'll put an airspace authorization in and two weeks later call them and say, look, I got a job in three days and I can't wait 90 days for something. I would rather do this safely. Uh, I'd like your blessing and approval. If you feel like it's, it's an unsafe flight, I will not fly, but I, I, need, I need to speak to you about getting the authorization to fly. And nine times out of 10, they've given me the permission in well, writing. And, th and that's a great point. And mm -hmm. I think it speaks to developing a relationship with your local FISDO office because the more they know about you, the more willing they're going to be to say yes to those I agree. requests. I agree. But again, guys, if you want to know the ins and the outs of how to apply for airspace authorizations and the detail therein, make sure to check out that video on our YouTube page. If you are a DroneU member, you can actually go into the DroneU community on Facebook and go to the files section and find the document for the actual text writing of what you should put inside of your airspace authorization because that will make filing for airspace authorization almost very, very quick. I think Vic put 20 through in an hour. That's pretty fast. Yeah, he's got it down to a to an art form. I think I'm going to pay some kid to just apply for airspace authorizations at every single airport in the country. Why, I mean, why not? How many airports are there? You know what's a real value to become a member of the Drone U community? There's this page called Where in the World on our site for mm. all Drone U members, and they list where they have airspace authorizations. So if you need to find someone who has an airspace authorization for a job like our caller, you can go into the community ask someone or just go into the where in the world page, look up who lives where and ask them to use their airspace authorization. And in most cases, someone does not need to physically be there while you fly. Vic actually talked about this in that video. I'm not really privy to that information. I always like to just have the person on site. Um, although, you know, pricing that is really important. Vic, you know, literally lends out his airspace authorizations for I think 25 bucks a pop. Hmm. which is really cheap. That's, That's really, really cheap. Really awesome. Uh, we worked with Gary uh, in Arizona, and he let us use his airspace authorization for, I think it was 200 bucks for two days, and that was awesome. Yeah, so, well worth it. 
Oh yeah, I mean, obviously, percent, hundred percent worth it. But anyway, I think that answers his question. Again, if you want to know the details on airspace authorizations, go to our YouTube page. If you are a member, you will have exclusive access to the text that you will actually put in those boxes to just make the process a little bit faster and less mundane. And on top of that, if you need instant access to airspace authorizations, the Drone You community is definitely the resource for you. This is why becoming a member is just so valuable. And for $47 a month, I literally complain daily to this bald guy over here about how cheap that is. Seriously. Yes, he does. <laughs> and we are, I mean, we're in the middle of creating much deeper level classes for consulting and it's certified level membership and it's coming down the pipe. Um, we're also rapidly expanding our training to go, all of our trainings are going to go through our Drone U Elite pilots who are some of the best pilots that we have in the community. So there will be trainings in your area soon for all those guys looking for trainings on the East Coast. It is coming your way. And also, we're going to have the most thorough and complete public safety course that's out there. And thanks to our friends up in Illinois, we'll be working with many of the Illinois fire departments to film those classes. It's almost 35 classes just for public safety. I can't wait. I know. We actually have to talk today about scheduling all that for November. So I'm I'm really excited. Maybe I should just do it in December because then I can just drive home to Virginia from there. <laughs> December in <laughs> Illinois, though. Yeah, that's know. a good I don't point. know if you want to be. But hey. Hey, the batteries will last longer in the cameras, not the drones. <laughs> that's right. I hope you're going to get into a, I don't know, a domed stadium or something for the classes. <laughs> I don't know. Keenan, what do you got set up for us? That's right. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you again for listening. And again, if you want that deeper information, check out the Drone You. And thanks to our sponsors. Remember, if you need a quad charger, go to Colorado Drone Chargers and enter discount code DRONEU8. That's all lowercase, DRONEU8. And if you're looking for a GPC case, make sure to enter code drone u15 just another great reason to keep listening by the way if you found the show useful please leave us a review but that's going to do it for us today my name is paul and i'm rob this is ask drone you 